In this clip we'll introduce basic vector operations. So we'll start out with something which actually looks a little bit like a spreadsheet. Okay, just what we will call a matrix of data. In particular this matrix has four rows and five columns so we also call it a four by five matrix. So this is really like a spreadsheet and these techniques will be very useful for big data operations and in stats for instance and econometrics we'll have to use it. But for now we don't want to look at the entire matrix but just at what we call vectors. So for instance this yellow highlighted column has four elements and we call it a four by one vector and it's actually a column vector because the data are in arranged in a column. But we may also be interested in a row so here we have this row with elements 3, negative 7, 1, 0 and 1. So this is a 1 by 5 vector. It has one row and five columns and we call it a row vector, a 1 by 5 row vector. To illustrate the value of this way of dealing with data, we're going to look at the first two columns of this matrix up here only. And let's call the first column X and the second Y. And we'll see, we'll treat these as sort of coordinates, X coordinates and Y coordinates. And we will soon see that this 4 by 2 matrix stores the information of four points in an X and Y coordinate system. So let me just draw a coordinate system to help you understand uh, why that is so. Let me just draw it a little further in the center. So we have four rows and in each row we have an X value and a Y value. So this pair of values here can really be interpreted as an X coordinate three and a Y coordinate negative seven. So that represents really the information for a point. Now these are uh, red surrounded values, x value of 7 and 5 value of 5 is the information for another point. And here we have another point, um, x value of say, 6 and y of 3. So here's another point and x being negative 4 and y being 2 here is an, another point. So this matrix contained really the information for these four points. So as vectors and matrices can store a lot of information, we will now want to learn how to perform mathematical operations with them. In particular, the vector operations, which we're going to talk about in this clip, we want to uh, learn are transposing, scaling, addition and subtraction. And we will also want to learn how we um, calculate a product between two vectors. In this particular case we will actually call that an inner product. The final operation we're going to encounter today is the length of a vector. So these three operations, transposing, scaling and length, are all operations that act on one vector at a time. Whereas these three operations are operations that involve two vectors at a time. Some of these will have geometric uh, interpretations which are useful. So let's start with looking at what it means to take the transpose of a vector. I can take a transpose of a matrix as well, but in here we only talk about vectors. So here's a vector x. It's a 4 by 1 vector with these four elements and if that is our vector then the vector x prime or x t standing for transpose is 3 7 6 4 so it has the same values but it is just flipped around it is turned from a column vector to a row vector so this is what a, the transpose operation does and if you transpose a row vector you get a column vector so next scaling what does scaling do? So let's work with the same original vector. And let's also consider 
a factor. So it's just a scalar. We call it a. Let's say in this particular case that value a takes the value 2. So then what is a times x? So a scalar times a vector. Well, each element is going to be multiplied with that scalar factor 2. So the result is 6, 14, 12, 8. What about the length of a vector? What does that represent? So to represent this graphically, we'll shrink our vector. We only look at a 2 by 1 vector uh, because we know we can really only represent two dimensions very well graphically. So here's a vector x with coordinates 3 and 4. And uh, 3 is our x1 coordinate and 4 is our x2 coordinate. So let's uh, draw that vector in here. So 3, 4, this is the point represented and the vector would be from the origin to that point. So the length of a vector does exactly what it says on the tin. We want to figure out how long this vector is, which goes from the origin to the point 3, 4. Now, some of you should be screaming Pythagoras, and that's exactly right. Our good old friend Pythagoras has figured out how to calculate that uh, that length. Um, these two stretches have the length of 4 and 3, and then the length of the um, of the vector will then be 3 squared plus 4 squared and the square root of that. So in our particular case it's going to be 9 plus 16 which is 25. Square root of 25 is 5. So that's the length of the vector x and we'll use these double bars on either side of x as a mathematical symbol. Now, generally of course when our values aren't necessarily 3 and 4 it's going to be the first element squared plus the second element squared of our vector, uh, which goes underneath the square root. Let's now turn our focus on the operations that involve two vectors. And we'll start with addition and subtraction. And that will be algebraically quite straightforward, but we'll also look at the geometric interpretation. So let's have ourselves two vectors x and y both of the same dimension two by one vectors and that is important uh, for these operations and in fact for all operations that combine vectors and matrices there are restrictions on the dimensions of the two and how they fit together so x plus y is quite straightforward we just add the two first elements together and then we add the two second elements together. So we'll get 7, 6. That's the result of x plus y. x minus y is equally straightforward. We just subtract the two respective elements from each other. So here we get negative 1 and 2 as the result of subtracting y from x. So what's what are the graphical interpretations of these two operations? We'll turn to our uh, trusted uh, coordinate system and uh, let's draw in our two individual vectors first. So first x has an x coordinate of 3, y coordinate of 4. So here's our x vector and let's use a different color. Uh, our y vector has coordinates 4 and 2. So that's our y vector, the red one. So now to add these, you go to the end of one of them, let's say you go to the end of x, and you basically add the y vector to the end. And what you end up with is this green vector. Okay, so we added the red one to the blue one. We added y to x, and the result is 7 and 6, which is, of course, um, our result of x plus y. What about x minus y? How do we go about this? So first we'll uh, replicate the two original vectors again. Uh, X here and the red one being Y. So now we subtract Y from X. We'll go again to the end of X, so here. Now when we added Y, we would just replicate the Y vector into this direction. 
So that's what adding y did. But now we want to subtract. And what we do is we still start at the end of the x vector, but we just turn the y vector around because there's a minus. And where we end up is at the point with the coordinates negative 1 and 2. And so the result is this little green vector which uh, goes from the origin to negative 1, 2. And that's of course also the result of our algebraic operation. Lastly, we're going to look at the inner product of two vectors. We'll uh, have two vectors here, slightly different vectors, x and y, but again they have to have the same dimension. So what we're going to do here is, this is a multiplication, a product type operation that operates on two vectors, but as a result we will actually get one number, a scalar. Okay, a scalar meaning just one number. And this scalar has some useful interpretation, in particular in a, in a special case which we will see in a moment. So here, what do we do? Let's say we want to multiply x times y. Now it turns out when you do when you multiply vectors, what you want is that these two sort of inner dimensions, the dimensions which meet of the two vectors, they need to be the same. Clearly they are not in this example, so we can't actually calculate the inner product x times y. We somehow need to swap these first ones around, so we'll do that using the transpose operation. So what about x prime times y? We have the dimensions underneath and now the inner dimensions match. Okay, That means we can calculate that inner product. We can calculate x prime times y. And this is sometimes just call that the inner product of x and y. But the understanding is you have to transpose one of them. So we could write that down like this. 2, 3 times negative 1, 4, a row vector times a column vector. And the way we calculate that is we take the respective first elements, multiply them, and then add the product of the respective second elements. If you had longer vectors, you would continue on. So in this case, we get a result of 10. This number 10 by itself doesn't have a very intuitive uh, meaning, but let me give you a special case where that result has a meaning. So what we do here is we use two new vectors, x being equal to 2, 4 and y to 1, negative uh, a half. If we now calculate the inner product, again meaning x prime times y, we get 2 times 1 plus 4 times negative a half and that is 0. Now that has a meaning. And what is that meaning? Let us draw the initial vector. So here's our x vector, coordinates 2 and 4. And now our y vector with coordinates 1 and negative a half. So now that picture gets slightly small. So here's 1 and a half. Okay. Now if you look at these two vectors, you'll see that they are orthogonal to each other. So they form an angle of 90 degrees. They are orthogonal. And whenever you calculate the inner product of two vectors which are orthogonal, you will get the result of zero.